Hey guys, welcome to BP The Bible Perspective. Chris Wallace versus Nicole Hannah-Jones on the subject, America Greatest Generation Wasn't So Great. <laughs> now, before we get into it, please like and share this video. Subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought, a comment, add it to the comments section below. All comments are welcome. Now, this, to me, was a great exchange. Chris Wallace interviewing uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones. I'll get to their bios in a moment. It seemed like he really felt he was going to rake her over the, 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 the coals with, with questions. And I want to unpack some of this. Mostly, I'm going to let uh, Nicole Hannah Jones do the responding because I think she does a brilliant response. Now, the reason why this is kind of interesting to me, um, Nicole Hannah did, she is the one of the originators of the 1619 Project. Um, so, on a progressive side, it was immensely popular. And as you can guess, on the conservative side, it was highly criticized. Uh, but basically, it, um, it, 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 it was a series of essays. Now, and this is important because of how the, the, the conservative slandered the project. And even now, when they mention critical race theory, the 1619 Project is one of the uh, demonized books to ban. Don't talk about it. But um, if you want to be honest, in other words, there were uh, one of the the key components of the 1619 Project is basically was to say, let's give you a view, a perspective of the origins of America, because oftentimes the history of America is told, of course, as America the Great, America the Free, right? America the Bold, the Strong. <clears throat> and what the 1619 Project basically uh, tackled was, it wasn't so great. We wasn't so free. I'm going to let uh, Nicole Hannah, you know, I'm going to let her respond to a lot of the questions uh, that Chris Wallace posed. So I'm not going to get into that. I, what I want to do, this, this background here is to show uh, the very fact that there is so much contention over it. And the very fact that there's contention over it proves that American, America hasn't gotten over its race problem, despite how uh, news agencies such as Fox News and other conservative news um, media pretend uh, as if there is no race problem in America. Now, Chris Wallace is a conservative. He worked for years, decades, as a matter of fact, on the Fox News channel. But I always saw him as a honest journalist. Now, that doesn't mean I agree with all of his perspective, but at the very least, I thought he was honest, unlike many, if not most, of the Fox News reporters and news um, the pundits, okay? Um, and so he left Fox News and because, because the craziness of Fox News got too crazy for him, and he ended up on CNN. There was a spinoff channel on CNN that has now shut down. I'm sad to hear that. Basically, Chris Wallace just wanted to do honest journalism. This is one of the programs that he did, and he questioned some, uh, I guess he always trying to take her to task on some statements she made concerning the, the, the generation, the World War II generation, which from some people they consider that one of the greatest generations of America. And she basically says, uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the greatest 
And, and, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to unpack this because she responds to some of the most typical and basic point of views that even good white people have. That, 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 that as history has been told to them, that it is hard for them to realize that as she will state that well the generation that with Chris Wallace is trying to clap back on her on that it wasn't great because you're missing the generation now when people say that America was good America was great um, that is true if you're white it was great for white people it was great for rich white people it was great for rich white men great for white men. It was really great for them. But if he wasn't a rich white man, or even a white man, it wasn't as great. If he was a woman, for example, it wasn't as great. And certainly if you were black, America wasn't great. It didn't treat you well. Now, again, I'm going to let, I'm going to let um, Nicole Hannah respond to some of these questions because they're very very great. Okay, so here we go. Good conversation for Americans to have. And frankly, I think, as they are able to handle it, for kids to have. But as I read the essay, I came across a couple of other statements that I wonder about. Now, okay. I want to put a couple of them up on the, on the screen. Without the idealistic, strenuous, and patriotic efforts of black Americans, our democracy would most likely look very different. It might not be a democracy at all. And then you wrote this. We like to call those who lived during World War II the greatest generation. But that allows us to ignore the fact that many of this generation fought for democracy abroad while brutally suppressing democracy for millions of American citizens. Again, I'm in no way minimizing our terrible racial legacy. But in some of these things, aren't you overstating? Now, before she responds, you see the question here. He says, I'm not minimizing the terrible racial injustice America had. But in reality, he's doing just that. The very fact that he's asking the question instead of dealing with it. In other words, um, how about showing us how racism wasn't as bad as he's trying to cover up of. Even though he's saying, I'm not saying that it's not, it wasn't as bad. No, 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 you're, you're saying exactly that. But listen to um, Nicole Hannah's response. How would you define democracy? Uh, the now, <clears throat> got to interrupt here because that's a great lead-in. That, that's a great lead-in. I would even say it's a great setup. <laughs> okay, it's a great setup. All right, here we go. Uh, rule by the people. So if you have uh, half of the country where in, in some states majorities, uh, in many other states uh, pluralities, 25% of the population, 40% of the population cannot vote, have their vote violently suppressed, uh, where there is a single one party, one race rule in a region where about 30% of the population is black, would you consider that a, a democracy? Listen, women weren't allowed to vote until- We weren't, we weren't a democracy then either. If I half of the population can't vote, I don't know how you define democracy, but I don't find, define that as democracy. No, I, 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 I Okay, brilliant, right? The, at this point, he really should kind of be quiet, but he's not. But this is the question that, again, people don't deal with, right? How do you define democracy, right? We taught it, we taught it. We taught America to free, we taught liberty and justice for all, but that's a lie. It wasn't liberty and justice for all. And guess what? It's still not liberty and justice for all. Let's continue. I agree with that. I'm just not sure that I would say that if it weren't for blacks, there wouldn't be a democracy at all. Well, 
We know how we got democracy. It was through a decades long black resistance struggle called the civil rights movement. Uh, that is a black rights struggle. So uh, you may not like the framing, um, but what I can tell you is the double V for victory campaign was black people were fighting in an army. They were going overseas. They were dying uh, for uh, to liberate other countries and then coming home and being lynched for wearing their uniform. They were coming home and they could not vote. They were coming home and they could see German prisoners of war going into restaurants and being served where they could not be served. I, I completely is, agree with all but, of that. Right, but you want to. Now, he says he agree, but here is the problem. Then what, what is your question? And in my point, go back and let's state it because let's keep this in mind. This is not the issue or the point that Chris brought up. See, remember, he didn't bring that up when he asked the question. See, if you're going to say what is life, liberty, and justice, and then you have to turn around and say, but I agree that everything that she just said was true, then you, you, you're admitting right here you're admitting that america couldn't be what you are proclaiming america to be let's continue treat that as uh, a marginal to the american story but you can't no, call no, yourself no. the greatest democracy and the greatest democratizing force in the country while violently and brutally suppressing democracy at home and that's what happened okay, but, for but, millions of american here's citizens where, here's where Okay, so again, now he's getting ready to me dig, dig his hole deeper. Um, but, but right there, this becomes the key issue. How can you say that it is democracy? And worse, notice what, notice what he's doing. And I think she hits it, she hits a nail on the head for him by saying. You're marginalizing it. You're minimizing it. And this is what you hear today from white conservatives. I mean, I'm not going to even necessarily even deal with racists, but see, I don't consider Chris Wallace a racist at all. I don't even consider him prejudiced. But I do think he has a flawed white point of view where he wants to say this part of America. Uh, because he's asking the question, remember. Let's continue. Oh, I, I should say this. He's challenging. He's trying to challenge some very notions where you 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 have to say that it can't be. And my point is, you can always have a great America if you start with America from the standpoint of truth. Let's continue. I take some objection. You're talking about, if you say the country, that we were fighting for democracy overseas and we were not living it, walking the walk, talking the talk at home, I completely agree with you. But you then I would say, then what's the point? Right? What's the point? All right, let's continue. You specifically say the greatest generation brutally suppressing, many of this generation brutally suppressing democracy for millions of Americans. To me, and I think Tom Brokaw, when he originally wrote the book, The Greatest Generation, was talking about 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds who came out of the farm fields of the Midwest, who came out of ethnic neighborhoods in Brooklyn and South Philly and, and, and stormed the beaches of Normandy and, and you know, fought to defeat the, the most, the worst regime, I would argue, in, in world history, and to say that they, but they were 20, 30 year olds. I, the country was brutally suppressing blacks, but the greatest generation wasn't. I, I, I kind of see this as a, a, a nonsense, the, the argument here. First and foremost, and, and they're going to get into this more, they're going to explore this. First of all, he's saying the 20 year olds didn't. Are you kidding me? Are, are you are you really kidding? Right now, if you think about what we're dealing with right now, you have high school kids, junior high school kids are getting suspended from school, white kids who are just being plain racist. They're being plain racist. They're playing slavery games, calling their fellow classmates the N-word, on and on and on. Why? Because racism is taught in homes. 
the, the, the nonsense of what he's saying right here is did not four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds see slavery, see Jim Crow? We could bring up lynching film uh, photos right now to show you where the entire town would come out for lynching. It was like carnivals had come to town. It was like the 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 the, the, the matinee, the premier matinee. We're going to have a lynching of a black man. And you know who was in the crowd? Little kids. They would bring their families out. So, so, so this is what I'm saying. This is what he's not dealing with. When he wants to talk about 20-year-olds, are you kidding me? And she just said, well, who are the ones that were racist? Is he trying to say that in the army, it wasn't the 20-year-olds that were calling the, their fellow uh, black soldiers the N-word or mistreating them in a race? He said, the 20-year-olds wasn't doing this? Well, let's listen to what he has to say. Well, they were. <laughs> I no, mean, they weren't. You don't You're telling me that a, far, that a kid uh, coming off a farm in Indiana or a kid who came from Brooklyn is was suppressing so Indiana black had people? the largest. Um, I'm going to just go back a little bit, but I'm, I'm gonna hit, hit, I want you to hear what she's getting ready to respond, but that's just plain nonsense. Uh, on what basis or how in the heck is he saying that a 20-year-old can't be racist? That's just nonsense to me. All right, here we go. Population of the Klan in the United States. The Klan was re I was re I understand, but that wasn't the twenty year old Indiana. kid who You don't think twenty year olds life. were in the Klan? You don't think twenty year olds were? I don't think many of them were. No. I, I mean, I don't know what evidence you have of that. Well, what evidence that do you have perception. that they were? So I didn't argue that. that they were. You're saying what they were. You said many of this generation was brutally suppressing democracy for millions of Americans. And that's factually inaccurate how many of that generation were um do you think that the only people you think, that's, you think that you're i'm just asking go ahead you think that's a broad a broad brush that you're willing to paint the 20 and 30 year olds who defended democracy i'm not talking about the leaders i'm not talking about the laws i'm not talking about the country i'm talking about the young people who risk their lives for instance on the beaches of normandy they were brutally suppressing african-americans um I will go a step further to say that those same people were not defending black people. They were not fighting for the rights of black people. Okay? The fact that he's trying to parse it, she's going to get into that about why he's saying that just making this black blanket statement that 20 year olds somehow can't be racist, again, is utter nonsense. But at the same time, the war that they were fighting, they weren't fighting for black people. And, he's, and, and that's why he's missing the point by saying that, uh, yeah, they could be racist. Yeah, they can at the same time have a deep love for America, fight for America, fight for the freedom and justice from their perspective, which didn't include black people. Yes, he can say that. Many good God-fearing white people, remember, they lived in Jim Crow society. They lived in segregated communities. They attended segregated churches, even though they themselves wasn't racist and didn't believe in those views. Nevertheless, they still lived and, 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 and benefited from Jim Crow. Let's continue. One, I think it's a it's a strange point to parse. Two, I don't I don't think of a thirty year old was. a thirty year old is not a young person. Uh, a thirty year old is a fully grown person who can serve in Congress, who can be the mayor, who can act, enact laws and policies. These are not children. These are not babies. Um, we wouldn't parse this. I think if we were talking again about another country and say, well, well, yes, the government was violently suppressing, but but everyone else, um, they weren't. They were glorious. You don't you don't do that. This is a, an argument about what our country was allowing. These these were countrymen, and they were fighting, by the way, in a Jim Crow military. They were fighting in a in an army in the Navy where black people were segregated, uh, where black people didn't even have equal rights in the military they were serving in. And we all allowed this. I, I don't understand this this trying to parse off who gets guilt or who does not um, for our collective history. We have. I just gotta say, bam, bingo, <laughs> right on. All right. 
be more honest about piercing that mythology, not to destroy our country, but to if we can honestly face who we are, then we can actually become the country that we want to be. But we can't do that by suppressing the truth. And, and to ask a black person um, whose, whose view of the greatest generation was black people were getting lynched. There were mass executions. I mean, right now they're trying to pardon a max, mass execution of black soldiers that happened in Texas, right? Um, these, this was our experience. And we were feeling more free going to Europe and actually, there are stories of uh, uh, of military officials telling the Europeans how to treat black soldiers so that they don't come back feeling they're going to have those same freedoms at home. We have to confront that. And by having these gauzy narratives about the greatest generation uh, doesn't help us confront the facts. That was good. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Very passionate about this. And let me just... Okay. Um, and... I'm going to end it there because I think she did a brilliant job. As he said, and as I say, good point. But that is the point. I think that it, it, it's important to understand why. And as I said, I consider Chris Wallace uh, not racist, not prejudiced. I consider Chris Wallace a good man. But he has that that point of view. And what's interesting about this is that he is a man who has, he has access to n information. So I'm kind of surprised that he would have that because, he, one, he's old enough to have lived in a lot of that and to see a lot of that. Even if you, like I say, in this case, he's, he's a white man. Even if he didn't live, you know, even if, even if he wasn't racist, if he wasn't living, you know, as a racist, I, he still saw it. And for him to have that view is troubling. But I think, I think... Uh, Nicole Hannah did an excellent job in rebutting that point of view. Look, guys, that is my uh, perspective. Love to hear your response, your opinions, your views. Add them to the comments section below. Um, and remember, all comments are welcome. And don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, The Bible Perspective. Till next time, I'll see you then.